chapter 6. And the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt you see what I will do to Pharaoh, for by a strong hand shall he let them go, and by a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spoke unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Ishiach, and unto Yaakov, as God Almighty. But by my name, yod heh vav -Heh, I made me not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them, to give them to the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings, wherein they sojourned. And moreover, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from the bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning which I lifted up my hand to give to Abraham, to Ishiach, and to Yaakov. I will give it you for a heritage. I am the Lord. And Moses spoke so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for impatience of spirit and for cruel bondage. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel, and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their fathers' houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanav, and Paru, Hezron, Charmi. These are the families of Reuben. And of the sons of Shimeon, Yamu, Yamin, Okhad, Ayakin, Zohar, and Shau, the son of a Canaanitish woman. These are the families of Shimeon. And these are the names of the sons of Lebi, according to their generations, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were a hundred and thirty and seven years. And the sons of Gershon, Libni, Shemi, according to their families. And the sons of Kohath, Amram, and Iskar, and Hebram, and Lutia. And the years of the life of Kohath were a hundred thirty and three years. And the sons of Marari, Machle, and Muchi. These are the families of the Levi, according to their generations. And Amram took him, Yochebed his father's sister to wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were a hundred and thirty and seven years, and the sons of Ishkar, Korach, Nepheg, Zikri, and the sons of Uziel, Meshael, and Elisavan, and Zitri. And Aaron took him Elisheva, the daughter of Aminadab, the sister of Nashon, to wife, and she bore him Nadab, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar, and the sons of Korach, Asir, and Elchanah, and Abiasar, these are the families of the Korachi. And Eliatzar, Aaron's son, took him one of the daughters of Putiel to wife, and she bore him Phinehas. These are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites according to their families, and these are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their hosts. These are they that spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass on the day when the Lord spoke unto Moses and to in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I speak unto you. And Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, we are just continuing uh, with Moses and Aaron. They've been 
sent to the Pharaoh and in the last chapter. They went before the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh kind of questioned the whole thing. He don't know who the Lord is. They, uh, the Egyptians, they believe in things that are carved on the wall. Uh, and they, he's not known that carving. He's not seen that uh, anywhere. And he doesn't know who the Lord is. His mind can't grasp a hold of it. Uh, the Lord, we find out, uh, controls everything, all the understandings and the hearts of men and their understandings as well. But he has, he didn't like it that Moses and Aaron was asking the people should have a little time to themselves, a little time off to go worship the Lord or, uh, of their understanding. Uh, uh, this we'll find out is 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 the God of of Abraham, and they wasn't going to no longer give them any straw or any substance to make the bricks out of uh, the they was no longer going to help them in any way they was going to have to do everything they's on their own and of, of course you know there's a learning curve with everything and it would be some time before you would be able to keep up under such a load but they've they've not made them look very good the Israelites is who we're talking about. The Moses and Aaron has not made them look very good before the Pharaoh, and they really don't want no more to do with it. And Moses went back to the uh, the Lord, and he says, "Look, the people ain't listening. Pharaoh's not going to listen to me, and it don't look like anything's getting any better." And that's kind of where we're picking it up in verse one. And the Lord said unto Moses. Now shalt you see what I will do to Pharaoh, for by a strong hand shall he let them go, and by a strong hand shall he drive them out of this land. And now the Lord, that's Hashem, that's the holy name there, uh, says to Moses, continuing in a conversation that Moses, the one who's drawn out, has with Hashem. Uh, and the holy name actually just means the one who exists. Uh, he doesn't have to be there. We'll find his presence alone is enough. Now shall you see what I will do to Pharaoh, that great house. The Lord raised it up. He's going to use it. It was for a purpose from the beginning, we'll find out. For by a strong hand shall he let them go. And that's a great work. And by a great work shall he drive them out of his land, too. And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. So... Elohim, the powers of creation itself, speak unto Moses. and Everything, tell him Moses, uh, this one that's drawn out, that this something's just not right. The, all these things that men say is God's not God. And these powers of creation, we find out, things have a way of working out, and we find that it's the Lord. It is Hashem that is behind all of it hidden behind it. Three, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Ishiak, and unto Yaakov, as God Almighty. But by my name, yod heh I made me not known to them. I appeared unto Abraham. He was the father of many nations, and it, unto Ishiak, that one at last, and unto Yaakov, he is the supplanter, the one, the supplanter, as God Almighty, as El Shaddai, um, or the this the mighty one of, of of strength, this mighty one of of almightiness, this this creator of all things, you might say, the powers of creation. But by my name, Y H W H or Yod Hey Vav Hey. That would be the holy name. Spell now, I made me not known to them. And the Lord's telling that as, as the existing one, though, I was not known to them. He hadn't made himself known of these powers. All they knew that all these sticks and stones wasn't God. But he had not yet proven that to them. For 
And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings wherein they sojourned. And I have also established my covenant. That's an agreement with them. An agreement is simple. Agreements where two people have a understanding and the one keeps his understanding as long as the other does. We'll find out both must be privy to 100% of the information, though, or no covenant, no agreement is binding. And it was to give them the land of Canaan, that covenant was. That was the purpose of it, that they might inherit the place of humility. Uh, and, and, and that's to be humble. And that land or is the place of their sojourn, where they'll live, where they'll work. And this is kind of uh, the way it is. Five. And moreover, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. I have remembered my covenant. And moreover, once again, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel. Uh, this groaning, more like this crying out, these uh, under the pain, under the suffering, and the, and the uh, uh, physical abuse as well. These children, these ones that come forth from Israel, that's the one that contends with the mighty one. Uh, the Lord established him, whom the Egyptians, that's those of the grave, keep in bondage. Uh, they got them tied up, we'll find out, in their understandings. I've remembered my covenant. Uh, I've recalled it now. Uh, this agreement that I made. Six. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Wherefore say unto the children, those that come forth from Israel, all those that contend with the mighty one, they face adversity every day. I am the Lord. I, uh, that's that holy name. That's the presence of the Lord himself. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, those of the graves. And these burdens, these yokes, these understandings even they've laid upon you. I will deliver you from their bondage, uh, that place where they've got you tied up. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Uh, an outstretched arm is an arm held out over with the power of strength. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, it's, it comes into your understandings that the Lord gave you from the beginning. And with these great judgments, even those that the Lord holds you under. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who, bought, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will take you to me for a people. And, to, and that is to, uh, when I, to be taken... Is, is to be like a bride, uh, one who is taken to yourself like a wife, a reflection to your understanding. And I will be to you like a God, a, this power, a great strength and a mightiness. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I am Hashem, that presence of uh, the Lord, your God, your strength, your mightiness. Even to have the power of the strength of all creation itself. Who brought you up out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. These things which they held you under. They placed them on you and caused you to bear it up or find out. Uh, while they gained from the misery and they gained from the burden. Those, those of the place of graves ate. And I will bring you into the land concerning which I lifted up my hand to give to Abraham, to Israel, to you, and to Yacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. And I will bring you into the land, into that place concerning which I lifted up my hand to give to Abraham, which he spoke, and that's and he lifted up his hand to bring forth his work, bring forth his work even to give it to Abraham, that father of many nations, to the one that laughs, and to Jacob, that supplanter. I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. I am Hashem. That I am the presence of the creation itself. And Moses spoke so unto the children of Israel that they hearkened not unto Moses for impatience of spirit and for cruel bondage. And Moses, the one who was drawn out, spoke so unto the children of Israel, but they 
what didn't listen will find out those that come forth from the mighty one they struggling with adversity things are hard enough in everyday life they didn't listen to Moses uh, for the impatience of spirit they didn't want to wait till later uh, to, for God to prove himself they, they wanted to go now they wanted to be hasty and because of the cruel bondage they was under ten and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying go in so now, and, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, So Hashem, once again, is going to speak, 11, to the one that's drawn out, saying, 11, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his, out of his land. Go in, he said, speak unto Pharaoh. That's the great house. It represents the kingdom, the king of Egypt. He's the mighty one over the place of the graves, you might say, that he... And tell him to let the children of Israel go out of his land, out of his place. Uh, those, all those that come forth from uh, Israel, he's the one that contends with the mighty one. And men as well, twelve. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? So now the one drawn out speaks unto Hashem, the presence of the Lord Himself. He says, Behold, the children of Israel have not listened unto me. How then should the Pharaoh, that great house, who the power of all the earth at that time it was perceived? Who am I? Who am of uncircumcised lips? Moses says, I'm not a great speaker. Uh, people don't listen to me. Why should the Pharaoh listened to me. 13. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, that's one that's drawn out, unto Aaron, that light bringer, and gave them a charge of the children of Israel. That's an order. See, that's, that's more like an order to the servant. Uh, of course, the servant's reluctant, kind of like the, in the story of Yonah, uh, Yonah and the, the reluctance here. But we find out, look, they go, and, he, this, uh, and unto Pharaoh, this king of Egypt, he also gave a charge that he should let the children of uh, Israel go so that the Lord could bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, up out of that land of grace, up out of that land of crypts and snares, these traps that we find out that have been laid, uh, to prey on the weak, the sick, and the poor always, uh, to maintain a certain amount of, or a certain lack of knowledge. 14. These are the heads of their father's houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Chanach, <laughs> And Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the fam these are the families of Reuben. So we're gonna have a little bit of genealogy here. I always like to refer to the genealogy kinda like the whispers, nobody really likes it. They, it's like it has gotten why is it here? Why we know why it's here. Uh, the Lord said I called him by name. Uh, that's why we have it here. We get the whispers. Sometimes I like to think maybe they had a little of their own language. They was in captivity, you know. And sometimes we have to have a way to communicate uh, so that others may not have full understanding, but those of the captivity do. And these are the sons of Reuben. These were the firstborn. It was Kanak. It was Kanak. Uh, Kanak means to narrow, uh, to straighten, to like as in self-discipline. And Palu, uh, to distinguish, like make a difference. Hezron, uh, that enclosure. Uh, and Charmi, the gardener. And, uh, well, these would be always, all. these are the families of Reuben. Reuben's the one that's seen the son. And the sons of Shimeon, that one that heard, were Yamil. Yamil means there's a day of the mighty one. They had heard about that day of the mighty one even. Yami, that's the son of my right hand, or that one 
comes forth the masculine of my great strength. Ohan, Ohan is to unite. Uh, it, it means to unite, to, to bring together. Yachin, uh, he means he. Yachin is he. And Zohar, uh, the, the one that whitens or shines. And Shaul, uh, this desire that, that's been asked for. He was the son, the one, the masculine to come forth from the Canaanitish woman. A woman is that comes from man uh, of humility. Uh, these would be the families of Shimeon, that one that heard. And these are the names of the sons of Levi. According to their generations, there was Gorshon and Kohath and Marari. Now these would be the sons of Levi. He's the one that joins to joins, and um, Gershon is a refugee or the fugitive, and Kohat is is the one that's allied kind of to himself. And Morari for bitterness, and these the years of the the life of the whole existence of Levi, those that joined were a hundred thirty and seven years. A hundred's the judgment. 30 is three tens. We can complete the law or the witness even of the law. 30 is also dedicated. Uh, it, and that's what we find. It was dedicated for a purpose uh, in these seven years even to finish it, uh, to make, make, cause it to be done. Even the greater understandings of it. 17, the sons of Gershon, Ulevni, and Shemei, according to their families. And these would be the sons of... of Gershon, Libni, and Shemei. Libni is white. Libni is like Laban. It's white. Uh, Shemei is the famous rumor. It's uh, that kind of that clean, pure uh, thing we see according to their families. And the sons of Kohath are Amran, and Ishkar, and Hebron, Utziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were 130 and 3 years. And the sons, those masculines that come forth from Koha, that's the one that allied it to himself, was Amran. That's the nations are exalted, it means the peoples are exalted. Ithkar is oil of oil, uh, more like that oil of anointing. And Hevron is the association or the seat of the association, and Utziel, the strength of the mighty one. The years of the life of Kohath, uh, that's the one that was allied to itself, was 133 years. Uh, it's always going to be the judgment. The, the judgment's in everything. These, it's dedicated uh, to for strength and the greater understandings. And the sons of Marari, that's our Machli and Mushi, and the, these are the families of the Levi, according to a generation. And the sons of masculines that come forth from Marari, that's those of bitterness, was Machli, that's the sick, and the sickly, and Mushki. Mushki, Mushki is sensitive, that's kind of sensitive. Um, these are the families of the Levi, those that join, uh, according to their generations. And Amran took him Yochaben. Uh, his father's sister to wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses, and the years of the life of Amram were a hundred and thirty and seven years. And Amram, that's the people's word that are exalted, took him Yochaben. Yochaped is the Lord's honorable. Yah is honorable. His father, uh, uh, and it could be the other way around as well. It could be either way. His father's sister. Uh, that's the one he come forth from, S sister. That would be a similar understanding. It would be a feminine sense, though. To wife would be the reflection of his understanding. And she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amran were 130 and 7 years. And she, that would be the mother of Yochaben, the Lord's honorable. Uh, uh, of course, it's that, the beauty of it. She would give birth to Aaron, that light giver, and Moses, the one who was drawn out. 
and the years of the life of Amran, that's the people that were exalted, were a hundred and thirty and seven years. And it would be for the judgment, uh, complete the law as a dedic for dedication, uh, 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 and even to put an end to the greater understandings. And the sons of Iskar, Korach and Nefeg and Zikri, these would be the sons of Iskar. Um, that oil or that, uh, that, that anointing light, uh, Korach, Nefeg, and Zikri. Uh, Korach are those that are bald. Nechev, Nefeg is the sprig or the sprout that's coming forth, and Zikri, uh, that, that causes to remember. 22, and the sons of Uchiel, Mephael, and Elzaphan, and Zitri. And these would be the sons of Uziel, that's those of the strength of the Mighty One. There's Meshael, that's who the Mighty One is. And el and the Mighty One of Treasure. And Zitri is, is that one that's protective or covering it, like to cover it. 23. And Aaron took him Elisheba, the daughter of Amenadab, the sister of Nashon, to wife. And she bore him Nadab, and Abihu, and Elatzar, and Itimar. And Aaron, he took Elisheba, that's the light giver, he takes Elisheba, uh, that's the mighty one of the oath, even that oath of seven, the daughter of Amenadab, and she's that pleasant understanding that comes forth from uh, the people of liberality, or the, the, these ones that offer freely. Uh, she is the sister of the same understanding as Nashon. He's the enchanter uh, to wife. And that would be the reflection of his understanding. And she bore him Nadab. That's that one that offers freely. And Abihu, the father of him. Uh, Elatsar, the mighty one's helper. And Itamar is that... That is the coast of the palm tree. Itamar means coast of the palm tree is like a, a select place, a selected place for the upright teaching. 24, and the sons of Korach, Asir, Elkanah, Abiasaf, and these are the families of the Korahi. And the sons of Korach, that's those that are bald. Well, uh, it's a symbolism of having your, your glory taken away. There was Asir. He was the prisoner, the one bound up, held. el the mighty one, has attained. And Abi Asaf, that's the father of the gatherer. These are the families of the Korahi, and that's those that are bald. Eliatsar, and Eliatsar, Elron's son, took him, one of the daughters of Putiel, to wife, and she bore him Phineas, and these are the heads of the father's houses of the Levi, according to their families. And Elliot saw, that's the mighty one's helper. Aaron, the light bringer's son, that masculine that come forth from him, would take him, one of these daughters, that's those pleasant understandings that come forth from Putiel, that's that the one of contempt of the mighty one, um, to wife and be a reflection of his understanding. She bore him Phineas. And Phineas is the mouth of the serpent, and I've also seen it translated as the mouth of brass. It's cold, uh, this, but the mouth of the serpent, as in uh, uh, having both the venomous bite and that uh, tongue of deception. These would be the heads, or those those who was over their fathers, the ones they come forth from the houses. Those of the levy, those that joined, according to their families. It's 26. And, and these are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their hosts. And these are the ones that Aaron and Moses uh, said to now, that the Lord was going to bring the children of Egypt out, according to their hosts. These hosts are armies, and prepared a uh, prepared army, too. 27. And... These are they that spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses of Aaron. 
the ones that they took up before the Pharaoh, and they spoke to Pharaoh, that's the great house, he's the king of Egypt, uh, place of graves to bring up the children of Israel from Egypt. So bring up all those that contend with the mighty one. You might say they face life's everyday adversities. Uh, they are bound up there in Egypt, that place of the graves. And 28, and it came to pass on the day when the Lord spoke unto Moses in the land of Egypt. And it came to pass on that day, on the day, even in that understanding when the Lord, Hashem, spoke even unto Moses, that one that was drawn out in the place of Egypt, even in that place of the grave. 29, that the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak you unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I speak unto you. That the Lord spoke, Hashem spoke, all the powers of creation itself spoke unto Moses, the one that was drawn out, saying, I am the Lord, these powers of creation. Now speak you unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. That's that great house, the Molech, over that place of graves. Even all that I speak unto you. And Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? And Moses, the one who's drawn out, says to, said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh listen to me? How shall the great house listen to me when I am a man of untrained lips, having not the uh, we'll find out the struggle for speech sometimes in the fact that uh, not having a lot of experience uh, debating with greatness. Sometimes we find ourselves in positions that are awkward, but we'll find out the Lord gives us all great strength when we ask of it. We're going to move forward to Exodus chapter 7. Turn and return.